Hi, my name is Martin Perhiniak. In this video, I'm going to show you the new video timeline in Adobe Photoshop CS6. Specifically, I'm going to talk about how to use adjustment layers to adjust videos. As you can see in this composition, I have a video and I used curves, vibrance and levels and I also added a text layer. You can see that in my layers panel or you can also see it here in the new timeline panel. But before we get to these options, I would like to show you how I started this uh, project. So I will create a new document and under the presets you can choose film and video and then you can choose the size that you need. In this case, I'm going with this preset. Now I click on OK. And as you can see, it automatically creates the title safe areas with guides as well, which can help you in your editing. And then you can just simply drag and drop the video file onto your canvas or use a file place, or you can use a bridge as well. And it will automatically create a video layer in the layers panel. If you want to use the timeline, you need to click on Create Video Timeline. As soon as you do that, you will see your video and you can easily edit it. I mean, if you want to cut the end or the beginning of the video, you can drag the end line or the beginning of the video um, footage and this little preview will help you to set the end point or the start point of it. That's really handy. You can also click here on this little icon if you want to add fade effects. For example, fade with black, we can add that in the beginning. By right clicking on it, you can set the duration easily. And then if we go back, you can see there is a nice fade effect already assigned to this little uh, clip. Now, I would like to add adjustment layers. So I'm going to adjustments and I'm going to use, um, let's say, Vibrance, first of all. And I would like to pump up the colors. So I just adjust Vibrance and Saturation. And as you can see, that's already on our timeline. So if I drag this over here and I go back in the timeline, you can see the video without Vibrance and then with Vibrance. So that's, that's a big difference. And obviously you can also add fade effects on adjustment layers as well. It's, I think it's brilliant because you can do these in Premiere uh, with video effects. But what's amazing in this feature is that if you are more familiar with Photoshop and the, the features in Photoshop, then you can actually use the same features that you use for uh, photographs. Now you can use them on videos. And it's, it's very similar, the whole uh, workflow. Um, it's just basically instead of working with images, you work with video. So let's add another adjustment layer. So I go back to the adjustments and I'm going to select curves and I would like to brighten up the image, but mainly the dark areas. So I'm going to adjust my curve. So I don't want to overexpose the bright areas. I want to focus here on the dark parts. So mainly the foreground. And as you can see, it's already much better. Let me just zoom a bit closer to a part of the image or actually, I'm sorry, it's a video, so part of the video. So as you can see, without the curves, it would look like this, and with the curves, it will look like that. If I turn off both vibrance and curves, that was before, and that's after. If I just turn off vibrance, now with having curves on, you can see that was the effect we achieved with vibrance, and that is the effect we achieved with curves. And now, as after this, I can add more and more adjustment layers and I can start editing the video together, even add type to it. But instead of going through all these steps, I just go back to my previous document. And here you can see the way I've set this video up. So first of all, it starts uh, with a fade in and it shows the original unadjusted uh, video. Then I add a curves adjustment fading in. Then I add a vibrance adjustment fading in. And at the end I add a bit of levels just to add a bit of contrast to the uh, video. And after that I have a text fading in. And at the end it has a motion as well, which is again another new feature of CS6. You can actually 
uh, animate motion on your layers, even on your videos. So you can animate, for example, panning or zooming as well. That's a really useful option. And if you click on this little arrow here on the left, you can see I have a transform uh, animation with two keyframes and I can easily set, let's say, this last point, for example, or maybe I, I set this one here in the middle and I select the layer and use the free transform tool move it around and it will be animated between those two keyframes. If you want to export your video you just simply need to click on this little, little arrow here at the bottom left. If you click on that you will get the options you can choose what format you would like to save your video file into and you can also choose only work area to be exported or all the frames and you can also set all these uh, options like size for example and even the encoder. As you can see, it can be set to image sequence. So instead of a video format, you can just save simply all the frames separately as images, which is also a really useful option. In this video, I don't want to go into the render options, but you have also 3D rendering options if you work with 3D models. So Photoshop is getting really powerful as you can see now. We can use video footage, we can use 3D models and animate them and use images together with audio. So it's, it's almost everything, all multimedia options we have. And it's just up to you and your creativity that what you would like to achieve. Instead of clicking on render in this case, I just would like to show you the end result. So I'm going to uh, the file that I created. I double click on it and here you can see first curves adjustment fading in, then the vibrance, then the contrast and then at the bottom we will see the text which will zoom in and then fade out. So let's check this again. Let me go back to the beginning. It fades in. Then comes the curves adjustment. Then the vibrance. Then the contrast. And then the text. Okay. So as you can see, it is a really really simple way to edit videos in Photoshop a very user friendly way. So you don't need to learn any other applications. But on the way, learning this uh, timeline in Photoshop, you will actually get a really good idea how uh, Adobe Premiere works and even After Effects. So this is a good way to start working with video. If you are familiar with Photoshop, you will get used to it. And if you want to uh, have more features and more options, then you can start learning Premiere and After Effects. And it will be much easier after learning the timeline in Photoshop CS6. I hope you found this tutorial useful and I hope you will join me uh, to learn more about the new features of Photoshop CS6 in the next tutorial. Thanks a lot for your attention.